Hey everybody, this is Yuya Takeda talking, and let's talk about CC ball action. This is one of those things inside of After Effects that you might have looked at and glossed over only because, well, the output is pretty limited and what you could do seems very limited. So a couple tutorials that I saw on YouTube were like, you know, disintegration effect, uh, using this to, you know, reveal a logo, just some very basic particle effects, essentially. So what could you do to make it even cooler than that? I thought I'd uh, use a very, very simple expression um, called index and time to drive essentially this entire animation that you're looking at right now. This is 100% procedural, it's very, very easy to make, and not only that, when you change any of the parameters, it will make something completely different. And it's actually really, really fun to play around with it. So let's get started with it um, before I talk you to death. Alright, I'm going to create a new composition, and uh, that's going to be called base. This base layer is going to contain the color information that's going to be necessary to drive the CC Ball Action plugin. So uh, the parameters don't really have to be anything, doesn't matter. Um, if you want this to be a square, go right ahead. If you want this to be 60 frames a second, go right ahead. Just keep it consistent though. Okay, um, so going to be the base, going to create a new solid, and in that solid I'm going to use, uh, what was it? Fractal Noise. Fractal noise, that is. So I'm just going to set this up to my liking. Um, I thought this actually looked pretty cool when I use blocks, just as a starting pattern. I'm going to set this up so that I get nice contrast in between all that. I'm going to uh, scale this up like so. You know, just kind of like maybe a little larger. Mm. Well, I'll show you what it looks like when it's like way too small because it does create a little bit of eh, noisy effect I'm not really a fan of, but. Maybe you might like it. And we're gonna colorize it now. So we're gonna use Colorama. Again, you could use any other filter for this, by the way. Like I am just using whatever worked for me or that little demo was showing. Oops. Every time I seem to hit enter, it just makes the color picker jump the colors. I'm not sure why, I think that's just a bug. So that's just kind of like the basis setup that I want to go for for now. I am going to now create a new composition and we're going to call this one CC Ball Action. This is where we're going to apply CC Ball Action. I don't know how many times I said the word CC Ball Action. Okay, uh, drag the base layer right into the CC Ball Action and we're going to apply the filter. All right, just a quick rundown of what exactly CC Ball Action does. Uh, scatter scatters the stuff around, just like so. You got lots of little balls here. Um, you can see a rotation uh, that just rotates the, the plane. Uh, twist will twist the thing. So if you combine the two, now you get this really cool spiral effect. Not particularly useful for every reason. Uh, grid spacing will space the uh, balls around ball size will change each individual size of the balls and in stability state this doesn't do anything on its own but when you have scatter enabled and if you use this this will animate the scatter okay so we're not going to be using the scatter we're not going to be using the instability state we're also not going to have like a huge giant grid spacing and uh, I'm just going to set it up so that it's easy to see all right good enough good enough Okay, so the two parameters that we're going to be um, animating is the rotation and twist angle. These two, um, I'm going to apply a very, very basic expression on them. So here is that. I'm going to, first of all, press Alt or Option on their Mac and uh, bring out the uh, expression window. And I'm going to input time multiplied by 10, just for the start. So when you do that, now it starts rotating it uh, based on this expression here. And uh, I want to change this to uh, XYZ, XYZ axes. And another thing that I want to change is the twist property here. This is going to really be really cool. So um, red, green, blue, brightness. These are these three are going to uh, directly use the whatever color is in this uh, precomp to drive essentially the look of it. So now notice how. That just really does did something cool. Now it's like a bunch of LED, LED panels just floating in space now. So that's what a, the effect was essentially. Very very simple. 
Okay, so we're gonna go a little more here. Um, I guess I'll explain the first of all the concept behind it. So basically, um, once you have this kind of setup going, right? So that's fine. So what you need to now understand is that we're gonna be duplicating this composition multiple times. Uh, and what After Effects does, now if I do this right now, it's not gonna do anything only because there's no way After Effects is offsetting any of these. So I want this to offset in order to create that trail effect that you saw earlier. Um, and for After Effects, every single layer has a number. So if you if you see base here, it's not just base. There's actually a, a number attached to it. So from you know one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way up to ten here. So we're gonna call that number using what's called index. So if I were to do, param I'm gonna put these in parentheses first of all, and I'm gonna add index. Yeah, just do times ten or something like that for now. That's nineteen. All right, and then if I were to now duplicate Command D on a Mac, you can see how that immediately created something really cool. Okay, uh, take note that right now it's kind of messy. Um, there's so many layers of stuff going on, and if you recall, my original one didn't look like this at all. So I'll show you how exactly to get rid of some of the particles because we actually need to hide some of them. Um, so my version was a lot more sparse. I feel. So what you need to do is simply just apply a couple black areas like this. So what that does is it just hides some of these areas, keeps a couple islands floating like that. And if we were to go back to our original composition, now that already looks a lot cooler. So here's another thing. Um, when uh, you do that, CC ball action will render the black particles as well. So we need to use additive mode and that will make it a lot better, actually. <laughs> All right, so one more thing that we need to apply this parameter to. So just to kind of uh, delete all that, I want to apply it to the twist property here because I want this to animate as well. So I'm going to press Alt or uh, Option once again, and then just copy and paste this parameter right here. And when you initially uh, do this, or whoops, oh, hit the Control Z, when you initially do this, it doesn't look that great. I mean, it's just a flat panel and it's kind of like about to get into the whole, you know, rotating thing. So what I usually like doing is I just like to add, you know, some value to it and it will make it a lot more chaotic. And of course this works with uh, once you duplicate it around. All right, so cool. So if you've been noticing, I have to each and every single time you know, delete all this, input a different number, and then go back. That's just a pain. Let's do something about that. All right, so first of all, I'm going to create a control box using a null. Null and slider. Slider control. And we're going to start naming these. Rotation. Duplicate that rotation. Uh, twist angle. And let's do time. All right. So, uh, with that being said, let's go in order here. Uh, time multiplied by 10 right now. We want to change the variable to the slider. So, sli time slider right in here. It's a little messy in terms of script. I mean, well, in terms of the expression here, I'm not really a huge fan of doing this, but, you know, it works. So, <laughs> okay, rotation goes to rotation. Follow the same logic. Time, you want to pick the number. Time slider and index for the index slide, for the twist angle slider. Okay, right now they're all zeros, so they're not gonna really do very much, but uh, let's just duplicate. Cool, and go into our control box, and now let's try adding a couple numbers in. All right, so now we're getting something. Pretty cool. So if I were to now apply some time, let's try like a larger number here. Now they're all self-animating. They do all sorts of you know crazy moves. Pretty cool. It's kind of creating this line right now, so just uh, to fix that, all you need to do is make a new camera. You change the parameters around to your liking, rotate it, and boom, we got ourselves a different camera angle, and that line is pretty much gone. Okay, um, one last thing. Uh, if you noticed in my original, some of the particles were actually tapering. Um, this is actually very easy to achieve, once again, using the index. I'm going to delete all that, um, and I'm going to use the uh, ball size here. I'm going to press Alt Option, 
ball size and uh, change that. So uh, let's put index uh, plus mm, two. I mean, you know, for every single new uh, layer that it creates, you'll it'll increase the size of the um, each of the balls to two. So now it will start tapering. Looks pretty good. And note that when you increase the number of layers, it obviously will increase the number of render time. So you want to be careful, but this is actually pretty. All right. So that's pretty much basically the effect of it. Now you could apply glows and anything else you want on top. Uh, this will really, really make it cool. So just check out how flexible this whole setup is. So not only is it 3D, if you change the base thing, um, let's say for example, let's just change the colors, try more reddish colors, and uh, let's change this from block to like soft linear. Now we got blobs. Let's see what happens. Actually, let's try squeezing these numbers around a little bit more. And CC ball action. All right, so now we got something completely different. Um, again, it's really, really fun to just tweak these parameters and get completely different results each and every time. Um, and so that being said, uh, please do explore and please show me what you get. Um, I really want to see what people get out of this and uh, what kind of cool stuff that you'll be making. So that's it for this little tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments. Please subscribe. Uh, I'll be making tutorials every now and then. I don't have a particular schedule right now. So yeah, um, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the future. Bye.